So there's good news if you're a Popples fan. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to get toys, but, you know, there's a good chance you'll get an IDW comic now. Yeah, well, there is that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, same with My Pet Monster, uh, Ju Julius Jr., Luna no Petunia, idea. Trios Detectives, and some obscure thing called Power Rangers? Luna Petunia, oh my god, I, I only saw a little bit of that. Uh, the girls were having an enhanced weekend and were skimming Netflix. So Cirque du Soleil CGI Kids Show. Wow. Yeah. What's the point of a Cirque du Soleil CG show? I, I thought, I, I thought the idea was the performance. It, it's it's like doing a Matrix spin in CG. I don't know. It's, I think it's just their design sensibilities. Ah, uh, French and weird and terrible. Mm-hmm. Terrible. Yeah, your Pinocchio two thousand K. Kind yeah, of that, awful. Yeah, yeah. Well, wasn't that French Canadians? Yep, that was French. That was largely French, but also French Canadian. Oh, okay. Well, I don't want to put the blame for that movie on the wrong people. It uh, seems unfair. But so I was just being careful with that. Okay. Well, the, of course, the big news is that uh, surprise announcement today. Saban has sold off a massive chunk of intellectual property to Hasbro. And at the center of this deal is Power Rangers. Yeah, so it's not it's not that Hasbro is licensing out to Power Rangers. They own it. Yeah, they own it. Uh, everything we listed earlier at the beginning and a mysterious others from uh, Saban has been sold off to Hasbro for a $522 million combination of cash and stock. This means that Hasbro now owns Power Rangers in its entirety. The, the media, sort the trademarks, of. the copyrights, basically everything that isn't its original source material from Japan, and we don't even know what kind of li what kind of deals are they're inheriting with that. Yeah, that's where things get weird. Yeah, I that's going to be I think Bandai has a stake in uh in the in the um in the actual production? Yeah, of the television show in Japan. Yeah. I don't think uh, so. Which could be very interesting, because the first question, of course, as Greg and I are both toy people, is what does this mean for toy production? Um, because... It means Power Rangers Imagine Next is going bye-bye, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, next time that license comes up for renewal? Yeah. That, that's that's that... going to the play school heroes style of play. Well, I am glad I got my my uh, Dragon Zord then. Cause that is an awesome figure. Um, but yeah, the Power Rangers has for a long time been a big U.S.-Japan cooperation, and there's a lot of questions to be asked about what this means now that the American partner is different. Um, especially given that Power Rangers has really a really long mythos. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, now, mind you, I haven't paid much attention to the most recent stuff, but as far as I'm aware, they've never done a full solid, we're totally rebooting outside of the movie, uh, the movie, the recent movie. Um, my and... understanding is that all this, I mean, this is definitely Lewis's thing. I'm not so much, I have a feeling the television show is not going to change much. No, no. I can't it, see Hasbro being that dense to screw with yeah. that formula. It will be interesting to see if um, if Bandai continues to be the uh, the toy producer in Japan. How long it takes for that deal to need renewing and to, for that deal to change? I'm I wouldn't bet on that changing anytime soon, just because it has been so long. But mm. yeah. I mean, it would be very interesting to find out. I mean, does this mean we're going? This probably means that for at least the foreseeable future, until something changes with the toy production in Japan and the toy rights there, that the U.S. and Japan are going to have completely different product for their associated Ranger shows. Mm -hmm. Um, which 
probably not the only time that's ever happened, but no, as I understand... No, I mean, I for a while I was trading with a, a Japanese fan mm-hmm. for various things, and one thing they wanted was a bunch of American Power Rangers product. Because yeah. apparently Bandai USA has been making villain figures that just do not exist. Oh, yeah, that does make sense. Because I remember that the villain figures always looked a little bit different stylistically from the Rangers. Mm-hmm. In in pretty much every show. Like, you could tell it was a different sculpting team. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, yeah, I distinctly remember hunting down several Rita Repulsa figures several mm-hmm. years ago when they were doing... when. The U.S. line was doing a lot of the uh, the first just, run. Yeah, re- redoing first run and a lot of history figures. Right. To fill out um, things. And yeah, because apparently they just never... I don't know what the character's name was in Japan, but they just never made Bandora. that character. What's that? Uh, Bandora. Okay. They Apparently they just... A lot of these villain figures just never existed. Well, because most of the villains are disposable. One episode, high then dies. Yeah, I mean that's kind of Sentai tradition. One thing I did find out today while I was researching, just out of uh, out of you know sort of fun bits of uh, of trivia, I found this I think in a Tumblr post. Might have been somewhere else. I'm bad with the sourcing, but uh, basically, the prominence of giant robots in in Sentai shows, especially Team Sentai, is Marvel's fault. Hmm. Marvel. Remember back in the, back in the late seventies, early eighties, you'd find comics from uh, from Marvel that were like Shogun Warriors and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, that turns out that wasn't just a licensing thing. They had a cooperative deal with Toei, and Toei got Spider Man out of that. For the Japanese Spider-Man TV show. Yeah. And uh, it turns out that they were... uh, Toei was concerned that they wouldn't be able to sell Spider-Man to a Japanese audience as a Sentai hero. uh, Without something to make him appeal. I think a lot of people are familiar with the Leopardon, or however you want to pronounce it. Yeah, Leopardon was introduced specifically to appeal to the Japanese audience. Which is not terribly surprising, because... Why else would you include a giant robot in a Spider-Man show? But, uh, but apparently, before that, it was not terribly common for Ranger types to have uh, uh, have giant robots. They tended to be more common ridery, mm-hmm. uh, where they would fight the monsters at their own sc- size. You know. Well, the follow-up show, which was uh, Battle Fever J was originally planned as basically a Sentai Avengers. Hmm. And I don't mean that in a in a abstract way. I mean, like, literally, they were going to have Sentai versions of major Marvel characters as part of this trade deal that got Marvel the Shogun Warriors and got them, to, got them Spider-Man through Toei. And um, yeah, that changed during pre-production, but uh, the popularity of Leopardon uh, produced uh, made it so that Battle uh, Battle Fever J had giant robots, and then that just became tradition from there on down. Hmm. Uh, so, sort of like how uh, Hasbro inadvertently created uh, Transformers through GI Joe, through the, uh, the Henshin Cyborg Microman connection. Yeah. Uh, they, Marvel accidentally created a lot of modern tropes for Sentai through the Japanese Spider-Man show. Hmm. And, uh, I, I don't know if the shows that became Power Rangers are part of that specific Toei chain of shows, but I think they might be. Uh, that might be something to ask, like, Lewis about on Twitter or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, the big thing that I find remarkable about this is that I don't think I've seen... This is a big property to change hands. Yeah, this is... I mean, it's not... It's not quite Disney or Marvel level, but yeah, this is pretty dang big. And it has been, like, the competitor for Transformers forever. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, it's... the As... It may not be as huge as it was. I mean, it's certainly not huge as it was, because if but you weren't around in, like, 
95 or whatever when it came out, 94, 95. Uh, it was insane. It oh, was yeah. But it's a, it's definitely ever. an evergreen. It's it's along yeah. with Ninja Turtles. It's an evergreen. Mm. It's probably yeah. never going away. Right. You're probably never going to be without a, uh, a a ranger show as long as there's a remote interest in superheroics and live action stunt stuff. Yeah. Um, which uh, I've children don't change that much. <laughs> children are always children, so I think there's always going to be an appeal to the Power Rangers thing. Yeah, well, speaking of the live, yeah, Lewis had a was watching his Twitter, and he's just like, yeah, I don't know what this means for the show, and I kind of responded, I don't think the show itself is going to change much. I don't see Hasbro thinking that they need to control anything about the show. Clearly, whatever's going on there works. Mm-hmm. That they wouldn't have dropped half a billion dollars on it if it was not a uh, if it was not something that they wanted in its basic basic size. I mean, there now, may be some changes in production company, or but you know. Yeah, I I, I don't think you're going to see much difference. They're going to want to they're going to want to have that deal with the Japanese producers of the show. Uh, they're going to want that cooperation. I mean, uh, from a business standpoint, uh, Hasbro loves having those partners. Mm-hmm. They love having those IP houses to work with. They love being able to uh, get in real nice and cozy with them and get every other property they have uh, to produce toys of. So they're they're probably not going to there's they're going to be as friendly as possible to Toei or whoever makes the uh, Japanese shows again. I should probably research that more. Hmm. Um, but it's yeah, all they're gonna. How the to- I, I I am pretty dead certain that the only place Hasbro is really gonna take any kind of lead is in how the toy line works now. Mm -hmm. Uh, I am going to predict that they are going to probably have a simultaneous thing where there's always going to be evergreen, like, nostalgia figures Mm -hmm. alongside the current stuff. I think that that is that is a plan that Hasbro has used for everything, and it seems to work for them. Yeah. Um... They do and, it for Star Wars, they do it for Marvel, they do it for Transformers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, I'd say they do it for G.I. Joe, but... Well, yeah, G.I. Joe, they don't have anything new to put in there. It's all... Well, all they do stuff. now. Oh, do they? They have Power Rangers. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 there we go. That's That's where I think... I would be very surprised if Power Rangers does not take the play pattern that G.I. Joe had. Oh, and I, that Star Wars still does. Four inch is going to be a big size class for them. Yeah, that that's where they're going to want to settle back to. Possibly uh, two and a, possibly the two and a half smaller scale. Mm-hmm. If they, I I am pretty certain. Like I said, my dim awareness of how the the uh, the Bandai toy lines have worked, even with Bandai US's input, mm-hmm. was that there wasn't a lot of cross price point there wasn't a lot of you know price point crossover your action figures came in several different scales and none of them really worked with the zords right yeah there's not a lot of uh, compatibility stuff there yeah and hasbro loves to make vehicles and figures to put in them yeah i and... have a feeling we're going to see figures we're going to see zords designed specifically to contain an action figure Oh yeah, and you get, and I gotta tell you, Sold if they separately. do, <laughs> if they do that Mighty Morphin, the first Mighty Morphin Megazord or the Dragon Zord in a like open it up and stick figures in kind of setup, mm-hmm. yeah, e- even with my limited interest as just a general mecha toy cr- collector, I'd want to get those. Um, and if oh my gosh, oh oh my gosh, if it actually ever does change over, where t- t- where like the Japanese deal changes and say Takara Tomy comes on for that. Mm. Takara Tomy engineered Zords. That would be a thing. Yeah. Them those com- you know, uh those combiner wars joints would work really nice on a big hefty Zord. Yeah. Um and the and nice also, thing is the Zords aren't nearly as complicated as the Transformers, so for now you don't even need Takara Tomy's engineers. Right, that's true. 
One thing that I would love to see is if Hasbro does do, start doing evergreen stuff, uh, a uh, a universal connection system for the Zords, mm. so that all the ones that do the five can combine in whatever combination you want. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, yeah, that that I think is uh, one thing that that Hasbro does really well when they decide to do it is play pattern. Yeah, and it'll be really interesting to see what they do for play pattern on this. Also, they, they are very good at making you need to collect them all. It's not just because mm-hmm. it's a. It's not just because oh, it's that character. It's because hey, this thing works with this thing. This thing becomes a thing mm-hmm. for this thing. Yeah, everything plugs together. The weapons combine. The figures, the figures interact. The the vehicles all lock together, or 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 you know have battle damage systems or whatever. They're all very good about that. And also, uh, you're gonna see big boost of video games. Mm. Uh, the Bandai's never really seemed that interested in video game production. I'm. Sh- I know there's been Power Rangers video games, but I can't think of anything... I don't know if there was anything even remotely to the uh, extent of, well, any of the Transformers games over the last decade and change. So I've seen some some mobile games uh, here and there. Um, and again, not being the hugest... Uh, we're more the Hasbro ex- <laughs> experts here than the Power Rangers experts. Uh, but no, I'm I'm going to imagine that there's yeah, I feel like yeah I they've got to notice something just through sheer cultural osmosis. Like yeah, I recognize like... when the turtles get new video games, and I don't really pay attention to turtles. Uh, looks like between '94 and 2017, there's been one. Like I don't remember anything really coming out on consoles. About 20 games. About 20 games spanning a little bit over 30 years. Mm. But, yeah, a lot of it is uh, 3DS games. I The more recent stuff's been iOS and Android. I guess there was a PlayStation, you know, a couple of things here, but they've never been, like, super huge, and a lot of their stuff was, I mean... Uh, a lot of stuff seems to be mobile, like Game Boy Advance. Mobile and a lot of quick Game Boy and dirty, Advance. I'm Game... guessing a lot of quick and dirty tie-in too. Yeah, you got some 16-bit stuff from back in the day when that was huge. Then there's oh, a yeah. big period where there's a bunch of just Nintendo, uh, uh, Nintendo Game Boy releases, and yeah, they don't seem to get stuff for the uh, the the big systems as often. And I'm wondering how many of those games were just more. The games from that era were just more or less straight ports of whatever was shoveled out in Japan. Um, yeah, it's a good question. I mean, but, uh... But yeah, I don't really recall anything along the lines of, yeah, okay, War for Cybertron and all that is kind of grandiose, but even, you know, the that recent Ninja Turtles brawler, mm-hmm. that apparently wasn't very good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, re- I recall that, but... Yeah, I remember like hearing about that stuff at least. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it didn't go under the radar. But the other thing is, is like think of how many how many freaking mobile games Transformers has had in the past couple of years. Yeah. And how many are still running? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm still playing Angry Birds Transformers, and that was came out what? That was the same year of Age of Extinction. Yeah. Well, they've got that one, and they've got. Just, uh... Uh, there's the... There's the tactical one. There's the weird fighting game one that's cross-dimensional. Yeah, well, so is the so is the tactical one, but... Mm-hmm. And you got Angry Birds, and you got, uh... I thought there was another one. There that was, was a card of... game, but that's that's long gone. That's yeah, there was the card game. That was, that was big for a while. A lot of my friends on Facebook were big into that. Yeah. Um, but now, but it's, yeah. And now it's the tactical, whose name I've blanked on... And the fighter. Yeah. And it was kind of funny seeing because uh, the tactical the tactical game is creating a combination, you know, animations for like Victorian and whatnot. And wow, mm-hmm. it'd be nice if the Combiner Wars cartoon could have pulled that off. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. 
One thing that I, I, I do think was is a pretty easy prediction is that you're going to see a big spike in merch just across the board. Yeah. Uh, if for no other reason than Hasbro is going to be very enthusiastic about being able to take advantage of this for the first time and very eager to make back some of that money that they've spent on it. Um, I, I am dead certain we're going to see a, a push for a Generations or Marvel Universe style of just the first couple of years of Power Rangers. Oh, totally. totally. I, I really feel like we're going to get a... I, I would be shocked if we don't get a decently posable Rita Repulsa and, Mo, and Lord Zed and most of the bad guys. Definitely the guys like Goldar and Finster yeah. and uh, those sort of recurrent bad guys. Um, you're also going to... And, you, you, I, within the first six months, you will see the original Mighty Morphin cast. Yeah. That's just... The, it'll Come be on, right Marvel there next Universe to whatever the new Bulk thing is. Skull. Marvel Universe style Bulk and Skull. Oh my goodness. I, if yeah, they I do would... a Bulk and Skull, I may have to buy. <laughs> I, I, I will say this right out, Hasbro, if you are listening, if by some weird coincidence you are listening. Yes, uh, four inch G.I. Joe scale Bulk and Skull, I will totally buy. Uh, you want to make a juice bar play set? Because uh, <laughs> that's the thing. You know my collecting. My collecting has moved into this weird, like, oh. hipster, the dumbest thing possible yeah, kind of zone. Play sets are dead. But on the other hand, uh, they could do a cardboard one through a Entertainment Earth like that, like they've done with some other properties. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely be worth doing a cardboard command center. Yeah. Um, like and- I said, it... I, I can see them doing a cardboard command center like they did for the G.I. Joe missile base recently. Recreate that mm-hmm. for... Right. Oh, Lord, I just realized that's going to be a major thing at Hascon, isn't it? Oh, Next Power year. Rangers? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a major thing at Hascon. Which oh, means we're going to start We're going to start seeing some... Again, I don't know, I don't know Rangers that well, but I would imagine we're going to see some interesting stuff out of, like, San Diego Comic-Con... Mm-hmm. Exclusive toy wise. Yeah, the way Hasbro likes to roll. Uh, one thing that everybody will uh, learn pretty quick is that you're probably going to have masked and unmasked options. Uh, you have a good chance for major popular characters at civilian identity figures, uh, which they've done in the past, but. Yeah. Uh, they're definitely going to focus heavy on the Zords. I would expect that there's probably going to be a, like a 10 or $15 standard Zord size, uh, for at least some, one option. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're, they're gonna, where the thing I'm most curious about is something you kind of, uh, mentioned jokingly before is IDW is heading into its big reboot, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think Boom Studios still has the Rangers license. I think they've got that for a while. Right. As soon as they as IDW has a chance to snatch it, though, they're gonna. Yeah. And as soon as they do, they're gonna start working it into the shared Hasbro verse. I doubt it. I don't think the shared Hasbro verse is sticking around much longer. That's a pity. That was the one thing I liked. Yeah. No, it, it I mean the the upcoming Unicron thing is the end of the idea of the current IDW Transformers universe. Yeah, I just which is like I don't think the other stuff sold well enough to justify continuing it yeah. long term. So which is a pity cuz at the yeah. very least they ought to have it be background stuff in the Transformers books. Um as they will continue to make Transformers books. Uh I like the idea of Hasbro treating their universe the way that Marvel that way Marvel treats its universe. Everything's in the same general play box, and don't really think too much about how how hard it is to make them work together. Um, but I, I also won't... doubt that we'll see a Transformers Power Rangers crossover, but I doubt it's going to be anything ongoing. Yeah, I don't know. I I like that shared universe. I. I think it's uh, it's one of those things that if they actually started the shared universe off after the reboot, where it's new and they can start laying the groundwork from the ground up, I think it would work a lot better. Although I don't think you're you, you'd you'd be hard pressed to sell a comic book about mask. 
mm. in any circumstance. Yeah. But um No, here's, I, here's I something that's going to be interesting as part of, it's not Power Rangers, but it's in the same vein. One of the things that uh, Saban had the rights to is Glitter Force. AKA Precure one of those uh, cute magical girls. Oh, one very of the popular one of the Precure things. Yeah. yeah. I mean it is Precure. Okay, it's Smile Precure. Pre-cure. Wow. I'm only aware of that existing because of titles on certain websites. Yeah. Um, but... The series was adapted into English by Saban Brands, a release as Netflix exclusive outside of Asia. So yeah, so now Hasbro apparently has the rights to that. Was that in the list of items yep. that they bought? Just after Popples. Oh, okay. So they don't own it. Well, they own the, they own the American rights to to Precure, which could mean action figures. Yeah. Uh, which I think uh, there's going to be a lot of people very excited about that possibility. That action doll market is really lucrative right now, and I don't know what... What, what does Hasbro have in there right now? Uh, they have that um, the Star Wars one, but I've heard it's not doing that great. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the format or just the fact that there's probably some Star Wars glut happening. Yeah, there, there's probably some Star Wars fatigue. It happens. Uh, what is the... Uh, who, does Has, did Hasbro lose the Disney stuff? Is that Mattel again? No, I think Hasbro still has Disney. Okay, Disney's, so that... ri- Disney's rights... Is, well, yeah, it probably would be Disney because they still, uh, cause they've still, because they still got Marvel and Star mm-hmm. Wars. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um... But yeah, it's they're gonna want an in-house thing that they can control. That's gonna be a good, or, or at least you know a. I guess a precure wouldn't be in-house. It would still be a license. But they they want any toy company worth their salt is gonna want a chunk of that action doll market. Yeah. And um, action doll and anime. Mm-hmm. It, it's a good combination. Also, a nice thing about characters in thing in magical girl series is that there's costume changes mm-hmm. which means outfits to sell which is a perfect thing for dolls yeah and since now people can actually sculpt an anime character's head as a doll and not have it look like a horrifying abomination like say the original u.s bandai sailor moon stuff just... hasbro still got some work to do with that i still look at that uh that Mega Man x they did for the singular Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite toy, toy line they made, and just, guys, guys, it's X. His face is not that complicated. How did you mess this up? See, with stuff like that, um, how long ago was that? Last year. God, just ask Capcom to send you the game model. Okay, well, well, here's the problem with them. <laughs> if you're doing that for Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, you're not going to get a good model because... Ugh. Oh, was that the problem? No, there's a lot of problems. It, it was sculpting, but it was also that Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite's models are not great. Something happened to Capcom in the last several years to where their art just isn't... It isn't as good. Yeah, no, I've noticed that their, their stuff... Their modeling isn't as good... If you looked at the uh, the Puzzle Fighter and compared it to the original Puzzle Fighter, it's sad because the current one looks like your your shitty Spencers and Toys R Us. Um, it looks like your shitty merch from an American yeah. company. Yeah, um, I did notice that some of the more recent Capcom games, the uh, like especially the Marvel vs. Capcom, a lot of the human characters are starting to look a little CGI Mortal Kombat-y. Yeah. Plasticky, plasticky, but also the proportions are very human and thus very boring. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're like ever they don't exaggerate the size of hands or feet, so they always seem, they seem weird and puny at a small scale, and you know stuff like well, that. Well, there was just a lot of complaints that with the most recent Marvels Capcom, the character models just did not look good. Yeah, I I remember that like I I remember noticing that and thinking that the that the Iron Man was kind of very disappointing looking. But any, not... but anybody with a normal human face just kind of looked dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But e- even so, I mean, it's... Yeah. 
you know, it, it's not that tricky. I've back engineered video game models for toy toy use through 3D printing before. I have a feeling that if they're going to make a toy line out of Glitter Force, then they're going to put a little more effort into it. Well, yeah. Plus, uh, it it's probably a little bit easier to make a good head sculpt for that at, when the head's two inches tall. Yeah. Or an inch tall, or however big it is, depending on how they proportion them. Yeah. The, uh... But, it looks like most of what they got was that would be for an older-ish group would be Power Rangers and Glitter Force. Mm-hmm. Looks like most of what they have left is like in the really little kid stuff. Yeah, I, you know what? I don't. I I would actually say that I think we probably do have at least a slight chance of popples. Yeah. Um. There's always a need for a you know a plush line. Everybody fights over. Th- as uh, as much as it's easy to ignore the pink aisle, the pink aisle is viciously fought over. That is valuable shelf real estate. And, and something that looks like a cross between a Care Bear and a Muppet, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, Popples also have the advantage that they're a made-up species. Yeah, so, like uh, I said, Care Bear and a Muppet. Right, which means they're also copyrightable and trademarkable. Mm-hmm. And, uh, they have that... Uh, they have that f- roll up into a ball action feature. And, and people seem to enjoy their uh those big like those big round animal pillows. Mhm. And uh the other thing is is that uh it has it it's actually kind of a golden bit of nostalgia because there's not really a way of doing popples wrong. Mhm. I don't think anybody remembers the names of specific popples. I don't uh I don't, I mean, maybe one or two people, but there's a lot of people have a vague remembrance of, oh, it was a little fuzzy creature I could fold into a ball. That was kind of cool. And some of them looked like sports balls. Yeah. I distinctly remember that commercial. Yeah. um, It's forever burned into my skull. You know what? As a kid, I I remember that commercial too. It was burned in my skull as well. Uh, One of the things I remember as a kid is like seeing that commercial and going, that doesn't look like a real sports ball. It doesn't look like a real football or a real soccer ball. It won't function that way. And it looks terrible. What was wrong with them just being spheres? I didn't think there was anything innately girly about a spherical bear. This was, Well, this was right about the time when they were really starting to gender segregate. Toys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember, yeah, that. That was when they were uh, splitting the market so they could get maximum extraction. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it. But the thing is, is I never, I know, I like knew two two guys that had a popple that was a. Sport oh, I knew popple. guys who had Cabbage Patch Kids. Right. Well, you see, the thing is, is I knew like I knew a lot of kids, male and female, who had popples, hmm. like just standard popples. Uh, and Care Bears, I had a, I had a couple of Care Bears. I was really fond of Good Luck Bear because my favorite color was green. Hmm. And um, the the fact, and I'd never seen a green teddy bear before. I I knew a lot of people who really wanted gummy bears to have plushes. Oh, and toys. I would have had some. I mean, if there was Dis- some stuff. Odd, oh, this was this was this wasn't nineties. Late- gummy bears was eighties. Wasn't the, well, oh yeah, it was like around like what, what like eighty seven, eighty eight thereabouts. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but eighties and nineties Disney was just really bad at taking advantage of their merchandising op- opportunities. They did not exploit uh, Ducktales or uh, Rescue Rangers or any of that stuff to any reasonable degree. Mm. Um, but. Yeah, I it's like I knew I knew a lot of kids who had popples, but only two people who had the sports ball popples. And it was because they were lamer than the normal ones. <laughs> and I most guys I knew who were who would want, you know, a popple because we were you know, cute little thing just folds into a ball. Uh, still young easy. enough to, you know, have plush. Yeah. Also, but it was a plush thing that could do a thing. Yeah. And that was one thing I remember is like as a kid I really liked toys that could do things if they had an action feature or a gimmick that was like really cool. Um, so it was like oh it's like a plushie that has a transformation that's cool. 
Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, this is a big deal because well, one, I'm wondering like, it is, is Haim Saban just getting out of kid vid? I mean, is he just dropping it entirely? Is the company dropping it entirely? Greg, you still with me? Oh, sorry, I'd accidentally hit the uh, the mic. Okay. Um, no, I, I'm looking at the thing about Saban Brands. That wait, did I don't know, hang on a second? Or did you know we may be very wrong here about? Oh, it says other entertainment assets. It doesn't say. I'm I'm just looking. It says that these are all the brands, but I'm not sure who's how many of these. About Saban Brands. Saban Brands growing entertainment portfolio includes Power Rangers, Treehouse, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't say how many of these are actually going to Hasbro. It does up at the top. Where, Their first see. paragraph. Uh, let's see. Uh, it okay. just says and others. Okay, My Pet Monster, Popples, Julius, Luna, Treehouse Detective, but and others. And others. Yeah. So we don't know if... Um... Well, let's the see stock, everything this... listed in the uh, about uh, about Saban brand section is being taken, so we don't know for sure that Glitter Force is being taken. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do know that Luna Petunia, Julius Jr., Treehouse Detectives, uh, and My Pet Monster and Popples are going on alongside uh, with uh, uh, with Power Rangers. There is one thing that I'm I'm. I can understand why it wouldn't be in the announcement, but one thing that I do hope they got the rights to, RID 2000. I think that's a rights quagmire. Well, it was a rights quagmire because Saban had it. I think there's also Disney, and Disney was involved at that point. Hmm. Will be interesting. Well, it's maybe... Who knows? Also, remember who the who's currently running Transformers? Do you really think they give a shit about? Well, I mean, they may or may not give a shit about this, uh, but like the the only things that they've been unable to do is release the cartoon. And base. Do you really think that this team cares about releasing the cartoon? I don't think the team's going to be involved in it. It's going to be one of the other departments. They just, uh, they shuffle stuff off to streaming services at random, seems. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, I don't think it's just that. I, I feel like Hasbro is let, doesn't really care about the past stuff. I don't think we're going to see them bother for what is a footnote in Transformers history. Well, it's entirely... A significant footnote, but it's still a footnote. Yeah. It just, uh, I'm not sure if it's one of those situations where, yes, I mean, it's a significant footnote, but it's still a footnote. But also, if you're just buying out a huge chunk of Saban IP, and Saban owns part of an IP of part of something you own, uh, I, I don't know that they wouldn't grab it if it was op if they had the option. Mm. Uh, again, until we know more about the deal, it's difficult to say if this was one of, something where uh, Saban was like, you have to buy all of our kid vid. Uh, or if uh, they were like, we're selling you this, 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 and this. Um, but it just, I have to imagine that it's got to be a pretty big change at Saban if they're dropping Power Rangers, if they're letting that go. Yeah. It's got to either be a, a shift in focus or um, uh, financial problems hmm. <laughs> or something. Because... Uh, like you said, it's it's evergreen. Why would you let that go unless you thought you could get a bigger payday out of it or you just needed the cash now? Or it was just going to be something that you weren't going to be doing anymore? No idea. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm just looking at some of the stuff on the Saban website. La Banda. The music-based reality competition series La Banda searches the U.S. and Latin America to create the ultimate Latino supergroup. Hmm. So they're making Menudo. Again. <laughs> I 
Also, the new popples are kind of scary looking. There's new popples? Yeah, the popples are on the site, and they're they're vaguely cat-like. Okay, drop me a drop me a couple of links uh, in the chat, and I'll make I'll try and throw up a couple of pictures on when I'm editing this. Uh, there's I just tossed you a link. They're they're like vaguely animal-like, and I'm kind of scared of them. Okay, let's see. I mean, maybe it's just that art, but no. Okay, the CG is just as creepy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I I see what's happened. I see what's happened. They've got modern girl brand face. Mm. Yeah, it's a sort of a common style in the way that they draw the eyes and the mouths. It yeah. It also, why do they all have the exact same fur pattern? Laziness. <laughs> Because They've all that... got the exact same pattern of light and dark fur, where one eye isn't the, the. It's always the left eye isn't. The, oh God. Okay, I need to get off, get away from that. That's yeah. that's just that's terrifying. That's disturbing, says the narrator. <laughs> now, um... also rainbow butterfly uniform unicorn kitty. Someone's mm. trying to rip off Unikitty. Yep. This is a blatant Unikitty ripoff. I, I'm actually impressed. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it, there, there's some memeish in there, a little meme stirred in. No, but I'm yeah. talking Unikitty from the Lego Movie. Oh yeah, no, but this it's is like aggressively. It, it's, it, it's Unikitty plus the internet, like let's throw every adjective at it possible, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um. But but yeah, this is uh, this is a big news just because no, I don't know of anybody who saw it coming, and if there were rumors of this, it would have popped up all over the place. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they had announced, you know, yeah, clearly they they got the rights to do the toys, but just straight up ownership—that's something else entirely. That's a big deal. I mean, that means that now it's a it's a Hasbro property, which depending on who's in charge of Hasbro at the time, means either they're going to exploit the heck out of it as a toy line, or they're going to exploit the heck out of it as a toy line and try very, 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 very hard to turn it into a media empire. Um, again. Again. I do want to see a crossover, though. I am dead certain we'll see a crossover in some medium. Mm-hmm. There's almost no... The the odds of there not being an official Power <laughs> Rangers Transformers crossover about... About zero now. Yeah. Uh, about zero and are you fucking kidding? Yeah. I I, I will say, uh, I recently read the DC miniseries of Power Rangers Justice League. Hmm. Um, actually, they, they, they handle it pretty well. Uh... The I've power... heard that the the Power Rangers comic situation is actually really good. Yeah, the um, the tone is appropriate to both universes. It's very clearly like not in the canon canonical DC universe because mm -hmm. uh, they actually have to try to get a cross dimensional portal made. Whereas in you know standard DC universe, you have twelve people you could ask on <laughs> in Gotham City alone. But um. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's very nicely handled. Um, they keep the character like uh, Lord Zed's the main main heavy from the Power Rangers universe, and uh, he teams up with Brainiac, and that's that's a fun team up. And there's a lot of uh, just a lot of crazy stuff that winds up happening. Um, Alpha winds up getting one of Lord Zed's monster make big. Big uh, yeah, spheres. I, I've seen. Yeah, but no, uh, it's uh, they they actually there there's a there's a fun little bit where uh, where Alpha is uh, is debating with Brainiac, and is basically calling him out on being a selfish myopic jerk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that doesn't seem very twelfth level intellect to me. <laughs> that just seems selfish. <laughs> 
Yeah, like I said, I've heard that uh, Rangers. Actually, I think, I think there, I think uh, one of the Transformers artists is working on that. I, I wouldn't be comic. surprised. Uh, the the crossover is very well well drawn. I um, can't remember who it is. It's I want to say Sarah. I can't. I I have such a hard time pronouncing her name. Mm-hmm. Perdusha. I I I know I've just mangled that one. <laughs> yeah. So let's but... run to Twitter and because I am following her. Let's see. She goes by Sarah Le Pew. Uh, no, I guess not her. Yeah. Well, um, there's just one more thing I do want to talk about, just as an oddity. It's a complete topic shift before we close out, because I think we've kind of talked the the deal that, as far as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, just the one other thing that I noticed recently that was strange is that there was a solicitation for the original run of Brute Force collected into a graphic novel. And this is related to the whole thing how? I said it's not related. Oh, okay. I said unrelated. Um, just as a, as a weird aside, if uh, just for the couple of people who are not, you know, into the same crazy thing that we are, that still continue to watch us for reasons I don't understand, um, Brute Force was an attempt by Marvel to create a its own toyetic uh, line of animals in power armor uh, not not like intelligent animals, but like normal animals that somebody put cyborg armor onto and increased their intelligence, be, and then sent them out to fight against ecological disasters, because that's that's the way things are done in cartoons. And they had uh, they got uh, Simon Furman to come up with it, and they uh, they put it all together, did a mini series. They had this whole thing planned where they were going to pitch it to toy companies. And try to start their own sort of in-house Transformers type thing with it, you know, mm-hmm. ride that '80s, '90s, uh, advertune wave. And they ran into a slight problem because, and I think I know why, which is just because you go to any given toy company and say, "Hey, we're Marvel and we'd like you to make toys," and they go, "Okay, about what? Like uh, the X-Men, Spider-Man, the Avengers? No, we got these new characters." new characters yeah they're all toyetic they're you know bear there's like a bear and a shark and a bunch of other animals like yeah see the problem with this is that no one knows these characters so we don't get any kind of brand recognition from it because they're new and it's without the additional esteem of being a well-known marvel brand all you have is just one more toyetic series pitch when literally everyone in our department has one of these in their back pocket. And most of these toy lines are dead. I mean, this was about the time, what, Sectars, Crystar, um, all these toy, all these other toy lines got their one year and then died? Mm-hmm. Well, that wasn't uh, terribly uncommon at the time. Yeah. I mean, everybody knew that they were shotgunning, uh, trying to get uh, whatever would stick against the wall. And in a lot of cases, I'm guessing that they did not, that uh, even stuff that lasted for a year, I mean, if you think about how toys were sold in the 70s, I mean, they didn't they didn't even have lines. There was just, here is ROM. Mm-hmm. It's the only thing we're making. Here's an Evil Knievel stunt cycle. The uh, one-year toy lines aren't necessarily bad things, but, you know, they're not the kind of runaway hits that people want. And this would have been 1990 when Brute Force number 1 came out. So this would be two years into the Ninja Turtles craze. Yeah. Uh, With, of course, and because it was 1990, there was, of course, an ecological theme to it, which uh, is one of those things that's... Never, doesn't seem to work that well. <laughs> like the the ecological message cartoon rarely goes very far. Uh, considering that Captain Planet is its most successful incarnation, that should tell you something. Yeah, yeah. But I just think it's weird that uh, that Marvel has decided to make a brute force comic. 
28 years after the fact. Wait, not... My math hat can't be that bad, can it? No, it is. Oh, God, 1990 was 28 years ago. Oh. <sighs> okay. I'm sad now. I, but... I can't say I'm terribly shocked at this anymore. Well... If only because clearly, um... Marvel is recognizing that going weird pays off between Oh Skull yeah, no, Girl I and um the movie friggin' success of Guardians of the Galaxy. Mhm. Mm well, they've got that whole sort of like subset of Marvel that's all tongue in cheek and hip. Yeah. Uh with Squirrel Girl and Gwenpool and Deadpool and uh all the uh de and you know, their their cornier stuff. Uh, on the side, your next waves, your your sarcastic, you know, uh, genre savvy, tongue in cheek yeah. type of stuff. And um, given that they did try out uh, brute force in a Deadpool annual uh, a while back, they did a they brought him back. Mm -hmm. um, which, in in all honesty, I think it's a high probability that it was in it was in large part due to. Lewis bringing attention back to the concept. <laughs> um, but I I can only imagine that they're releasing the graphic novel because they're going to give them a new mini series or they're going to drop them into Squirrel Girl as side characters or something. Yeah. Um, because why else would you release a four issue mini series from 1990 that really wasn't even that good in a physically printed book? I mean, it's like if they were sending it through one of their uh, digital systems, I would not think they had plans, but there you go. And, uh, yeah, so that's the news. Uh, Hasbro now owns Power Rangers and Popples somehow. I don't even know how, how like, Saban got Popples, but... Mm. Yeah. yeah it's just, it's just going to be an interesting year to see how the whole... Uh, Toei, Bandai, Hasbro, slash Takaratomi thing works out. I'm assuming that Hasbro is going to keep Bandai at well over arm's length. Yeah, they're not going to get chummy with them um, for multiple reasons. One, because they're Takaratomi's big rival in mm. Japan. And the other, because Bandai actually has a U.S. branch. Yeah. Um, which makes them sort of a direct rival for for Hasbro themselves. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where it goes. And like I said, I predict a lot of, a, a lot more merch than you're probably used to seeing. And uh, probably a lot, a lot of merch yet. The, the toys themselves will probably be a lot more streamlined. Mm -hmm. But in a way that's uh, that I, I think people may be surprised. I think there's going to be like, if your big thing is compatibility of figures, you know, uh, make it, it then they're going to do you then Hasbro's going to be going to be good for you in that regard. Yeah. Like if if you want to make sure that like when you eventually get your Zeo Rangers and your Wild Force Rangers and your Mystic uh Mystic Force I think it was called uh Rangers if you if you want to make sure that they look like they belong together when you put them all together for a big group battle, uh, Hasbro's going to do that pretty reliably. Mhm. Mm but, uh, any closing thoughts? Um, well, aside from a little worry about, you know, how we're going to have, like, three toy companies at most at some point. <laughs> yeah, that is a problem. There is an issue with consolidation. Well, okay, let's, okay, yeah, well, this hasn't really changed the number of toy companies, but it is kind of a little unsettling the more one company gets more and more licenses. It, it is, uh, well, yeah, I mean, in this case, this is a major toy IP, uh, toy IP that's falling into Hasbro's hands, another one. But, yeah, and so... It's permanent-like. Yeah, yeah, and this one's all permanent-like, yeah. So, uh... If people uh, want to be... they piss off Toei, which I can't <laughs> imagine they would. Okay, and I just, before we go out, I just want to make sure of something. Hold on. I'm just going to pop over. I'm just going to make sure that Toei is actually the people who produce the Japanese versions of them. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Hang on just a moment. I'm fairly certain it is. I mean, we could have just been gone an hour and been crediting the wrong people. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Okay. The first set of products from Hasbro will be available in spring 2019. Yeah, they're going to be all yep. the hell over Hascon. Yep, Super Sentai is, in fact, Toei. Okay. So, yeah. And That's going to be an interesting Hascon. I mean, the first one was a surreal experience, so... And Battle, Battle Fever J is considered part of the uh, part of the uh, Super Sentai series. Okay. So yeah, direct descendant from uh, Toei Spider Man. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, for putting up with our prattling. And uh, we'll have more videos coming. Bye. Bye. Hey, Pipples, if you liked our nonsense, want to give us a like or a subscribe or leave a comment down there somewhere. You can also do us a big solid by joining our Patreon, where you'll get to join us for live streams, get early access to the newest videos, and other such things. Geek Vision.